We're going to get started. Uh, I'm Victoria Garrity. I'm the mayor here in Ossining, and um, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us, having active members of the community involved in this conversation about how to update our comprehensive plan is essential for us doing a good job at envisioning the future of our community. And we need members from the whole community to be actively participating. We do have a translator here with us this evening and some headsets. Is there anyone who would prefer to listen to the conversation in Spanish tonight? If so, we can uh, arrange to have you have a headset. Okay, um, and I'd like to acknowledge a couple of the other elected officials who are here this evening, um, Trustee Quantel Bazemore and Trustee Omar Herrera, and I believe that, yep, and uh, we have trustees, uh, uh, no, we have um, Trustee Levin and Trustee um, uh, Quesada, I believe, are going to be joining us as soon as they can, they can get here. Um, because we are in this space, I will remind everyone, if you're not familiar with the library, to. Uh, Notice where the exits are. There's one in that direction as well as where you came from. And then the bathrooms are in the, uh, the wall just straight back here behind the theater. Uh, when I am done speaking, I'm going to be introducing Tiffany Zazula from Pace Land Use Law Center. They are helping us uh, with this phase of the comprehensive plan, doing the community outreach and engagement portion. And she's going to uh, give an overview of what is happening or what comprehensive plans are in the broad wider world of comprehensive plans. And then uh, she'll hand it off to Tracy Corbett, our village planner, who's going to give us uh, a history of Ossining comprehensive planning. We were actually one of the first communities in Westchester to have a comprehensive plan uh, from 1930, which is uh, really interesting. So uh, then we will go into some breakout sessions. And Tracy will be leading one of them, as well as Jessica, also from the Pace Land Use Law Center. She's one of the nice people who welcomed you when you came in here and probably wrote your name tag for you. And um, then after the uh, breakout session, we'll report back from each of the groups and hear what you figured out together. And then on your way out, you'll have an opportunity to give us some feedback. Um, Tiffany will go into a little more depth of what to expect for this evening. I just want to say thanks so much for being here. Your participation is critical for us doing a good job with this comprehensive plan update. So I can hit the, the slides here. Um, okay, well, welcome. Thanks for attending this evening. Um, as, as the mayor said, my name is Tiffany Zazula. I feel like I'm hiding behind the screen right now. I'm going to try to, you'll see enough of me in a little bit. But um, I am from the Land Use Law Center at Pace Law School. Uh, the Land Use Law Center, if those of you that don't know us, um, we're actually a not-for-profit center that provides technical assistance and training to municipalities throughout the Hudson Valley. Um, and, and actually, some of our training programs are, are now nationally known, which is um, amazing. Uh, and I got to tell you, I'm always thrilled to come out to talk about comprehensive planning because this, I know everyone's like, really? But yes, this is the most exciting moment in a municipality. Um, and, and, and so it thrills me when uh, communities are undertaking this process um, because it, if, if done right, it really sets the vision and the tone of future development and conservation within your community. Um, so tonight, just to go through that again, yes, I'm going to talk a little bit about what comprehensive plans are. Uh, Tracy will come up and talk about the, uh, your current village plan and what's in it. We're going to do a bit of a breakout uh, uh, activity to talk about the public's participation in planning um, and maybe some of your thoughts regarding some of the substance that should go in with the comprehensive plan. Um, and then we will uh, do a little bit of a report out slash talk about next steps and how uh, you can continue to be a part of this dialogue. So what is a comprehensive plan? Um, under just, I mean, it is, as I said, one of the most important tools for a local municipality in terms of their future planning. And um, it's a written document for those who, that have never actually seen a comprehensive plan. It looks like a little report. And I shouldn't say little because some of them are much bigger than, than what I'm projecting here. But it is a formally written document that talks and expresses a community's goals, their objectives, their strategy for the future of their community. And so we look at it uh, in terms of a comprehensive plan as your municipality's New Year's resolution. What is it that you want to accomplish as a community in the next five to 10 years, right? And how are you going to do that? Because we, as we all know, we lose sight of our New Year's resolution by the time it becomes July. 
And so how do we make sure that we are in check regarding, right, that we are accomplishing our goals or making sure we're moving forward and implementing those goals? In New York State, for those of you that care about this, and the New York State statute actually lists 15 types of components that can go within a comprehensive plan. Now, do you have to follow those 15 components that New York State puts out? No, they're suggestions. Your comprehensive plan should be for the village of Ossining. So every community's comprehensive plan essentially looks a little different. It has topics of concern for that municipality. So again, in New York, if you were to look at the statute, it will list out 15 components that you may want to consider. Now, here's a funny thing. In New York, legally, you do not have to have a comprehensive plan. I know. But do you want to have a comprehensive plan? Yes. Are there municipalities out there that don't have a comprehensive plan? Yes. But we encourage those that don't have a comprehensive plan to certainly have one. Because adopting any type of land use regulations, right, for future zoning, right, or at subdivision regulations or any type of land use regulations, we want to make sure that they're in conformance to the comprehensive plan. And the more that they're in conformance with that comprehensive plan, right, you are setting sort of the precedent of why that regulation is important. You're protected, right, for making sure that you've done the regulation and now it is uh, essentially um, uh, conforming to your comprehensive plan. So you are providing significant legal protection for yourself as a municipality as you move forward with some of the decisions regarding zoning and land use that you find important for your community. Um, for those that don't have comprehensive plans, it ends up falling into the court's hands to look and decide whether or not that land use regulation met the goals of the community. And you have courts, therefore, just simply looking at past decisions that were made by a community or past policies or some maybe area plans or studies that were done. It's much easier to have that protection if you have a comprehensive plan in place. So many communities, at, oh, I forgot to, there we go. I tend to not, there we go. So, I know, right? I don't use my PowerPoints. But, um, many communities ask me, well, Tiff, how often should we do a comprehensive plan? And here's the thing. Pretty much, I typically recommend about every five to ten years. As change is occurring in your municipality, you want to look back on their comprehensive plan and decide, have you met some of those objectives and goals, right? Or we're seeing a significant change in our population, or we're seeing significant changes within our zoning, right? That zoning is not accomplishing what we would like to accomplish as a community. So again, that comprehensive plan is that blueprint of where you're going to move forward. Now, what traditionally is the first step of a municipality? It's appointing a task force or appointing some type of comprehensive plan committee. And Tracy's probably gonna go into this in a little bit uh, in a, uh, right after me. But this, this committee is essentially a task force that creates sort of that vision of where your community is going to go. How are they going to participate? How are, what are the topics that they've heard from the public that should go into the comprehensive plan? Legally, that comprehensive plan committee must have one planning board member on the committee. Now here's what's exciting. We have seen a variety of people sit on comprehensive plan committees. Yes, municipal officials, maybe those that are on the Chamber of Commerce or on a homeowners association, people who have a background maybe in the environment or they're part of the nonprofit community. We have seen housing advocates, landowners, maybe not here, but farmers. Again, that planning board member. We have also seen high school students sit on comprehensive plan committees. Um, we have seen religious leaders sit on comprehensive plan committees. Right? It's those that not are not only experts potentially in the land use subject matter, but those are who are connected to your community, connected to the citizens of the community that could then engage you know, a broader set of perspectives and input um, as you move forward within the development of this plan. 
The committee's roles, like I was just mentioning before, and this highlights it a little bit further, they conduct studies, they maybe perform research, um, they may consider looking at partnering with adjacent communities and getting their perspectives. They're constantly looking uh, maybe when working with the village uh, regarding look, leveraging grant dollars and finding other ways to get assistance. Most importantly, they're developing a community engagement process and again working towards amending that comprehensive plan and considering some of the regulatory change that would need to take place to again meet the goals of your comprehensive plan. Bless you. I mentioned this before about the time for a new plan. Um, I want to highlight it again. Many municipalities are sitting in the seats, right, just like you, wondering, is this the right time? And again, if you're looking and seeing a lot of social and community needs that have changed, if you've seen a lot of local shifts or national shifts, I have, again, municipalities that have not updated a comprehensive plan since possibly 1956. A lot has changed since 1956, <laughs> and, and therefore, that comprehensive plan needs to speak to what the citizens currently are thinking, how they live, how they work, and how they recreate in their community, right? So those changes need to be reflected, and we want to begin to think of the future changes that might be uh, on the way. Those types of considerations uh, should be going into your new comprehensive plan. So here's something that I just want to highlight to everyone. For those of you that have looked at comprehensive plans or are obviously interested in the subject because you're here tonight on a comprehensive plan, um, comprehensive planning has traditionally looked one way, which is they have been focused on specific topics within a comprehensive plan. So we have very discrete single topic, single issue topic areas, whether that be transportation or the environment. Um, we've seen chapters on open space or economic development. And what we're beginning to see is a new wave of comprehensive plans. Whether or not the village does this, I don't know, but I just want to speak to it. We're beginning to see an integration, actually, an interwoven sort of nature of a comprehensive plan because of the complexity, right, of these topics. They all affect one another, right? You make an impact in transportation, you probably have an impact on the environment. You, how you develop somewhere, right? Impacts the environment, impacts transportation. All of these things, all the topics of land use are interwoven. And so why can't our comprehensive plan begin to speak like that instead of those single topics? Now again, I'm not suggest suggesting one or the other, but I just want to show you there's a new multidisciplinary approach to comprehensive planning that highlights these linkages in these topic areas um, and begin to highlight then really the sustainable considerations of sustainability and have interwoven topics of equity and coordinated planning and things like that. And so in comprehensive planning, and you don't need to look at all those gibberish on the side. These are some of the thing, the um, tools we are using for comprehensive planning that we look at. There is the American Planning Association's Comprehensive Plan Standards, Lead ND. Again, I'm not going to go into all of these, but these are some of the, the organizations and thoughts that begin to, uh, can become components and beco become uh, sort of interwoven within your newest comprehensive plan. More importantly, we are looking at sustainability broadly, right? How does the environment, how does equity, how does uh, the economics of your community come together within your comprehensive plan? It is those three spheres that become your community becoming more uh, sustainable. And so um, th this, again, is what uh, some of the newer comprehensive plans are highlighting. They're actually using principles. Um, I think I have it and themes of a comprehensive plan instead. Uh, this is a, from the APA, and actually one of your neighboring municipalities is using this for their comprehensive plan, but they've created topics of livable built environment that integrates, obviously, the built environment. Uh, it directs new development uh, to commercial areas of their town. It includes the topic of multifamily housing at a range of price points. It brings in cultural and recreational activities into this topic area and begins to talk about a safe space for drivers, pedestrians, and cyclists. That's what, again, I'm just highlighting a few of the things within livable built environment. 
They have a chapter on harmony with nature, obviously talking about the environmental assets and the safeguards to our natural environment. Um, and, and, and begins to even talk about maintaining the town's existing compact urban form in, an, in order to protect some of those natural uh, features. So again, talking about green technology, embracing energy efficiencies, um, sustainability, um, and innovative practices in um, recycling and sustainability. In Resilient Economy, it obviously talks about the town's fiscal position um, in the county. It begins to talk about a state, creating a stable and diverse source of tax revenue. It begins to talk about transportation and that connections that transportation makes uh, to key employment markets. It talks about job opportunities and successful commercial areas. That's what that, again, highlighting some of the things of resilient economy. And the healthy community begins to talk about fresh air, clean water, restoring green spaces, uh, recreational programs, bike trails, the phys physical, mental, and social well-being of their residents, um, and bike routes, pollution-free transportation options, um, and o equitable open space and recreational. And then responsible regionalism is essentially their connection to the surrounding municipalities. Finally, I just want to highlight essentially one of the biggest reasons we're here tonight is also for your help. So before I turn it over to Tracy, um, I just want to mention because one of my uh, favorite things to do besides comprehensive planning is actually public engagement and listening to residents talk about their community. Um, and it is fantastic that the village wants to partner with all of you, its citizens, um, to essentially uh, understand the best and most um, effective ways that then the village can reach out to not just those of you in attendance tonight, but to your larger residents in general, right? How do we connect to more people um, and have them become a part of this conversation? Um, so we are seen in public engagement. There's the traditional forum tonight, like a 7 p.m. meeting. And there are things that we can do from online surveys to poster boards that you saw out front that we'd love for you to participate in to being a part of town festivals, uh, to maybe doing neighborhood walks or creative outlets. Essentially, how do we get out, right? And how does the village get out to get more perspective and more conversation into our comprehensive plan? Because we can't just hold 7 p.m. at night workshops. That's not going to get the majority of people, right, as a part of this conversation. And so tonight, we're gonna ask you, during some of our breakout group, of how do we reach the citizens here in the village and the residents and who are the people that connect us to others um, and what are some creative fun ways that we might want to consider to get more voices to be a part of this process. Um, again, I am thrilled the village is looking at updating their comprehensive plan. It's a very exciting moment. Um, if done right, right? Developers, citizens, become the implementers of your comprehensive plan. They begin from the, they're there from the beginning, giving the advice to the village of what they want to see in the next five to 10 years. And then we begin to implement that as a community together. That's what this comprehensive plan should do. And on that note, I'm gonna turn it to Tracy and she'll tell you a little bit about where you have been as a community and where you are going. As Tracy comes to the podium, I just want to interject as promised, Deputy Mayor Rika Levin has joined us and Trustee Quesada is with us as well. And I also want to point out that there are a number of current and recent members of our land use boards who are with us. Thank you so much for being here and lending your insights and expertise. Um, and uh, I should have said this in Spanish earlier. Somebody who speaks Spanish better than me would do a better job. Pero yo creo que puede entenderme. Si usted prefiere escuchar esta reunión en español, por favor, uh, raise your hand. Hay alguien que prefiere en español porque hay un, alguien así para traducir y hay uh, los um, earphones, ¿no? Bueno, gracias. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad to see so many people out. This is just terrific. Um, I am the director of planning. I've been with the village of Ossining since last August. Some of you may have known me. I was at the county for 16 years prior to that, um, dealing with uh, planning in the Hudson River towns, watershed planning. And before that, I was at the local level with the town of Cortland, the city of Binghamton, and the city of Utica. So I'm back to the local level. I'm really excited to be here. Um, and if you haven't been to a land use board, that's where I usually find me many nights out of the month. But tonight, I'm really excited to be here to start this process. So my presentation is going to co cover uh, past plans, current plans, why we're updating our current plan, and I'm going to touch upon the update process. 
So, as mentioned earlier, uh, the village of Hassening was one of the first to have a comprehensive plan in Westchester County in uh, 1930. Uh, this is actually when comprehensive planning was just starting in the country. It, the, probably the first one was about 1925. So our first plan, is, they were quite the visionaries. Um, this image that you see here what is the hollow. And they had proposed a, about a 10,000 seat outdoor amphitheater. And they have this huge civic center, um, which was quite uh, visionary and quite grand. And this was in the Italian section. It looks like there could have been a lot of Italian because a lot of the images looks like Italy that they proposed. But they also proposed Sing Sing Hill Boulevard, which was kind of an interesting uh, road that would have reached out to a Newcastle. And they also were concerned, just as we are today, with Station Plaza. Um, the parking came to fruition, but they had also proposed this colonnade with stores and nice landscaping so that when people drove by, they saw something really attractive in the village of Ossining. And then our next comprehensive plan was uh, 1959, um, and that's when they laid the foundations for urban renewal. Um, they really kind of just wanted to demolish the downtown and create parking and make it easy for cars to get in and out. And, and then quite following after that was urban renewal. This is actually a, uh, a little, uh, flyer from the Urban Renewal Agency of what the vision was. And interestingly, that smack was a graphic that they weren't going to demolish, that they were only going to take down the things that had to come down. But many buildings came down in our downtown center during this process. I mean, and then when you zoom in a little bit, they basically wanted the, the downtown to look like SUNY Purchase. That's the best I think it might have looked like. So our current conference planned took a great leap from 1959 to 2009 when it was adopted. Uh, that started in 2005 with the establishment of a comprehensive plan committee. Um, this was quite a heavy lift to move us almost 50 some odd years ahead. Um, they did a, a survey. This utilized 2000 data. The census comes out every 10 years officially, and now they have updates. So, even though it was a 2009 plan, it was based on, on data that was almost 10 years older. They did use a, a consultant and planning staff, and then they broke it down into subcommittees of affordable housing, infrastructure, and transportation, downtown waterfront and economic, economic development, and neighborhood quality of life. So they kind of did some of that little thematic um, and not just talk about housing, recreation, um, and infrastructure. So as I said, it was organized into six topics, and I'm gonna briefly go over these six topics. So for the waterfront, the, the vision was to redevelop the waterfront area by maximizing the Hudson River as the village's defining visual, open space, and recreational amenity, while at the same time promoting mixed-use development that will supply economic support to the community. Um, in 2009, most of the waterfront was zoned uh, industrial, and there's still a lot of uh, the residual of many industrial uses that are down there. But some things have happened is that we have some new mixed-use development that has come in and, and trying to do improvements to the parks. So some of these objectives were uh, implemented, but not all. Um, so for downtown economic development, the vision was to increase visitors to the visitors to the downtown Crescent by building on its historic architecture, soaring views of the Hudson, pedestrian-friendly scale, and ethnic and socioeconomic diversity. So, this plan actually, after this plan, there was historic districts that were created and, and passed, which was great about preserving the, the downtown. Um, there's been still a lot more studies to deal with a lot of the urban renewal lots that are the parking lots in the downtown. And that's a problem that we still struggle with that we hope to address in the upcoming plan. So the transportation vision was to modify roadways, enhance pedestrian qualities, and improve public and local transit to make Austin more environmentally sustainable and a better able to offer as residents alternatives to car dependent lifestyles. The village of Austin actually has a high rate of people that do not own cars in compared to the whole county as a whole and it's really important to have transportation alternatives. Uh, since the 2009 plan, the village did participate with the town of Austin on the MOGO, the bicycle and pedestrian connectivity plan, which uh, we just won an award uh, from WUMF, uh, the Westchester Municipal Planning Federation, along with the town of Ossining and Newcastle for this innovative plan. 
Um, and it has some really lofty ideas of trying to connect uh, our, the, a lot of the trails currently are north-south trails, so to try and make those connections going east-west so that we can have better access to the large trails such as the North County Trail. Um, and this would also hopefully increase the walkability of the downtown. And for infrastructure, the vision is to ensure that land and building development in the village of Ossining are environmentally sustainable. One of the objectives was to improve our uh, water filtration plant, and that's actually a, a large capital project that's undergoing right now. Unless you look at Google Maps, you probably don't see our water plant, but there it is. So for affordable housing, the vision was to protect Austin's social diversity by providing housing opportunities for young families, longtime residents, people employed within the village, and seniors. Uh, we've, Village has worked a lot with IFCA to create affordable housing and also through our inclusionary zoning of 10% affordable units required for uh, any multifamily developments over six units. There have been a lot of plans in, since this plan to improve upon that and one of the, this is one of the reasons we want to update our plan is to start folding in some of the uh, more current studies. And for neighborhood quality of life, the vision was to protect the physical and social qualities that make Austin a safe, diverse, affordable, and pleasant community. Uh, the village has worked on this through our open space, trying to create better spaces, such as the Sing Sing Kill Greenway, which is an amazing space uh, that brings you down the cool clove down to the waterfront, and have plans as we can to improve upon that. So why do we need to update? And as Tiff said earlier, that it's, it's good to do it every five to 10 years. I think 10 years is probably more common because um, it's a lot of work to do, do a comprehensive plan. You know, we would really like to um, possibly fold in uh, recent studies that have been done for the downtown uh, central area and some of the housing plans that have been done. And then just we need to update our zoning to meet current trends and improve land use review processes. You know, there are new land uses that come into play. A lot of even a, a restaurant or something could have multi-type uses within it. Like you could start having yoga classes at a bar or something like that that could just be not necessarily fit perfectly in our uh, code. So always looking at new ways, even different types of housing, micro-housing, um, providing for food trucks. There's just a lot of new things that are out there. Even how breweries are classified, uh, it's kind of an evolving thing that we need to update. So this is our zoning map, if you haven't seen it. And once the comprehensive is adopted, it, the, the zoning has to be um, consistent with the comprehensive plan. And this was updated last, we've had some tweaks to it in 2016. So, one other reason why we need to look into updating our comprehensive plan, with our last comprehensive plan, all those properties that you see in green do not meet the minimum lot size for a district. This is problematic in that it um, caused to an increase of people needing to go before Zoning Board of Appeals because it's harder to do any development, even like to put a porch on your property. It creates a lot of work for us <laughs> to, to process all these applications. And you can see a lot of them tend to be in our T zone and places that might be where people are more modest incomes. So it's an even an, equi an, an equitable issue of providing, you know, regulations that aren't too burdensome. And this is only a little analysis that we've done of just in the T zone. We would like to do this um, through our, the comprehensive plan update. These are properties in green that are non-conforming uses, legal non-conforming uses in the T zone. And when you start having a lot of these in a district, if they're legal non-conforming, um, it, this is even more of a challenge than being in an undersized lot because it's very difficult to uh, expand or do alterations on these without uh, proving hardship. Um, and it, it, having this many, there are a lot of, especially in the one that's by Spring Street, uh, we have a lot of multifamilies in this area, so if one of these burns to the ground, it really can't be built, rebuilt according to the code. It should be uh, into conformance, which would be a, a one or a two family unit. Sorry. Oh, did it fall? Okay. So, as I 
discuss that there were a lot of things that have happened since 2009. This is the list of planning documents and reports and studies that have been done since 2009. Um, a lot of them focus really about housing and the redevelopment of all the parking lots that are left over from urban renewal. Uh, and um, some of it is also done for the, the bike plan. Uh, and some of it was visual, the, the architectural design guidelines that has to deal with community character that was implemented. So I'm gonna go quickly over the comprehensive plan uh, process for the village. First, as Tiffany says, we need to establish our steering committee to guide the process. I'm the planner, I don't tell you what the vision is. The vision has to come from you. I help facilitate that. Uh, and we're gonna first create a community engagement plan, how we're gonna interact with the community. And then, the, then we, with the community and the, the committee, we will review and evaluate all the existing uh, studies and all the uh, ex existing conditions. Stuff like our census population, how has it increased, uh, and how it's changed. We can also look at um, environmental issues, stormwater. We can the whole realm of things that you want to look at, uh, even transportation, how people can move around the village, how they commute to work, where they're commuting to work. These things all come into play when we're starting to look at the comprehensive plan. So once we've gone through all that information, there will be outreach meetings and we'll have what are often called, sometimes they, not always, but we could do a SWOT analysis, which is the strength, weak, weaknesses, opportunities, and, and threats. So we kind of evaluate, like, what's important? What do we have to, uh, how do we want to evaluate our community? You know, what, what do we find that we really love our community and what do we want to enhance? We love our waterfront, we love the sunsets, you know, you know, the weaknesses. Many people say housing costs a lot here. How do we make it affordable? In the opportunities, a lot of people look at our parking lots. There are a lot of opportunities in a surface lot. Maybe we could do something better with that. And then the threats, what are some of the threats that are happening to this area? You could say, we have to be worried about air quality and people who have asthma. You could think about the housing back again, the, the, the cost of living. So these are all the things we start thinking about and we start looking at the, the neighborhoods and maybe we think, oh, some of our residential neighborhoods on the outskirts are very stable, they're fine. We need to focus on the downtown. But this is something that the Comprehensive Panel and Committee comes to. It's not something that we know right yet. So, this is kind of a moving target as we move forward because it's a process. And then once they, we determine the scope of the comprehensive plan, we'll most likely be engaging in a consultant that will actually do more community engagement and creating actually drafting policy and vision and goals. And hopefully, we'll then end with a final plan and that will be lots of workshops for everyone to understand what the plan is. And then we'll go through the adoption process. The comprehensive plan has to be adopted by the Board of Trustees, and we get to go through the seeker process to adopt it. And then once that is done, we need to update our zoning to be consistent with the comprehensive plan. So don't get caught up in the details here, but I just want to give you a little idea of how long this could take. This is hopeful that we could do something this quick. You know, we are starting out really today, and hopefully within a year we could get to the point where we have a final plan. This is an aggressive, but it, would be, it was done. Mount Kisco just, just did it, so we can too. And then we'd go in through um, the adoption process and the zoning update. And that would probably happen in um, year 2020 and year 2021. So now it's time to break out. And um, our work session with Tiffany and Jessica. You have name tags on, right, that have a number one or a number two. Yes. If, you're, if you came with someone that you really like and you're in different groups, you can stick with your friend. Uh, we'll know who you are. Um, and what we're going to do is group everyone with a uh, number one on their name tag. You're actually going to come and just sort of move. You'll grab a chair. Don't move yet. Don't move yet. You're going to move your chair or you're going to move closer to where my uh, worksheets are right up there and we're going to facilitate a dialogue regarding some of those questions and then talk a little bit to all of you about some of the thoughts you have towards what should be going into your comprehensive plan. And then for those of you that have a number two, you're actually going to move up to the left hand corner 
Uh, and you'll sit in the auditorium seats here, um, and you'll see where Jessica is. She's putting up that, uh, the, she's changing positions. Uh, so we're going to, you'll be up in the left-hand corner. We're going to ask you a few questions. We're going to talk about it. I have some ground rules for participation, because I know how this goes. So my ground rules, I use ground rules at home with my kids, with my husband. So my ground rules are, and I don't even have them posted anywhere, but we're going to ask everyone to just actually speak one at a time, raise your hand. If I come over to you and maybe tap you on the shoulder very nicely, it means you've possibly gone on a little too long and we need to move to the next person. But that's okay because we know everyone's excited about this, right? So we're gonna participate, I'd like everyone to participate. One person speak at a time, raise your hand. Try not to comment on what maybe another person's suggestion is. It's their suggestion, totally great. We're gonna get a lot of suggestions on the table here today. We don't have to deb debate them by any means. We're just gonna throw them up on this. We're gonna be creative. Um, so we're not, no, fi no fights tonight. Uh, that'll be a ground rule. And what else? I think that's probably about it. Can everyone agree by those ground rules? A little nodding of heads. Sir, you're not not? Okay, all right, just kidding. All right, so group number one, you're gonna come over here towards me, uh, where this gentleman is standing, where your hand, right there, group one. Group two is Jessica up in the back corner, and we'll get started for a little bit. 